Okay. We're going to begin the, the uh, hearing. <coughs> I know, are we able to session. We have a motion from Senator Chamley to go into executive session. So moved. Thank you. Uh, and seconded? Second. Also, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Good. I'd like to um, start by executing HB 394, Ben, relative to crop theft. The 399 is relative to annulment of arrests or convictions for possession of, of less than three quarters of an ounce of marijuana. And we have an amendment um, that clarifies uh, that the charges for an annulment under this process are the same as any other and addresses the issue of filing fees flagged by the judicial branch. Um, the amendment is. Amendment 1942. I move what to pass. Senator Levesque moves ought to pass on the amendment. I will second. Discussion. It clarifies it. I agree. Um, makes it a violation instead of a crime. Um, personally, I see this as, as a piece of the decriminalization, which we have already, which we passed in the last session. This is... Yes. Thank you. This is why I supported decriminalization in the past session. I wanted, I did not want my constituents who were caught with a pipe with residue with a small amount of marijuana to be facing uh, misdemeanor charges. I didn't think they were fair and I didn't think they were right. We've changed the law for those in the future. I am all for changing this today. Thank you, Senator French. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, I can't support this amendment, neither can I support the bill. And you're correct that last year we dealt with this issue. But there is a problem when you're when you are talking about where the offense occurred before September 16th, 2017, which is on line eight. Um, years ago, people um, were just convicted of having marijuana. And they never waited, they never, in fact, they really never did too much other than the fact that you were in possession of it. So if someone, say, in the 1960s got arrested and has a record for possessing marijuana, they can get it convicted, they, excuse me, they can get it annulled, and it could be more than three quarters of an ounce. We just don't know. And what needs to happen is there needs to be a process in place. So uh, the court is going to be able to make a determination whether or not it was three quarters of an ounce or less. Right now, that just does not exist. So you could have had someone who had an, an ounce of marijuana, and you're now going to allow them to annul that. And that's counter to what the law says. So I, until we develop a procedure or a process for people who, uh, who were con arrested and convicted of possession of marijuana, um, prior to it actually being weighed, I can't support this. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And I just like to, sorry, I was just gonna say, I'd just like to point out that, that um, the, uh, not to kind of change your mind, but to just make a point of, okay, that, that, that the, um, this, this requires that somebody who would petition for a moment would have to state under oath at the risk of perjury that it was under three quarters of an ounce, and then it would they, the court would have uh, the prosecutor can object within ten days of receiving a copy of the petition. Just to be clear about the about the yeah. yes, Senator French. It's it's my opinion that if someone was caught in the 1960s, 50 or 60 years ago, with one ounce of marijuana and have, has had no other problems. I, I don't care if their convictions are no, and I don't care how much it weighed at Thank this you. point. 
Okay. Yes, I just want to say that I think this is an important first step. I mean, there may be people that have more than three quarters, and maybe we're going to have to look at that as well. But this is a good first step. We've already decriminalized it. Why should we be penalizing these people that we know are, are you know, have these convictions for three quarters of an hour? Why is it important? And uh, I, having lived through, through the 60s and 70s, um, I feel as though there also is a, um, that was a different time, and it was a different product. And these are people, I know of people when I was in college who were, were arrested for having a joint. I don't know if that's what it's yeah. still called. Um, and and uh, that happened more than, than would be happening probably now, but it is. It meant that they ended up with a misdemeanor. You had druggy friends. I had I had very questionable friends. Yes, <laughs> like you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so is uh, seeing no further discussion. All those in favor of are we going to an amendment? of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. <coughs> Thank you. Do I hear a motion for the? Move on to pass as amended. Thank you. Um, the motion is off to pass as amended. I will second that. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 So it's three to two. And Senator French, how would you feel about taking this? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. OK. Uh, the next one we will be executing is uh, Senate Bill 481. Yeah. Okay. Relative to legalization and regulation of cannabis and making appropriations therefore. And I would like to move be refer. And I'll tell you why. Um, I I'll second that. Okay, second that. Thank you very much. Um, so it's moved and seconded to re refer. I um, personally feel that there is a lot of information we've heard, a lot of people with concerns about, and we have, frankly, there has not been time to, to uh, just the nature of what this session has been like to talk deeply, we've tried, but to talk deeply about what kinds of um, amendments might make this the right bill, uh, if, if, if in fact we can do that. So we would like to, I'd like to recommend we work on this bill. Make it better, right, Senator French? Right. Okay. Um, is there any discussion? I just want to say that I also agree. I think we refer is right, the right thing to do. Um, I believe in the overall concept, but I do have concerns about how we market to children, mm -hmm. about the commercialization. There are, there are issues that I, I think that we can tighten up in this bill. Correct. I agree with you. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of re-refer? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, can we put this on? Do you want to talk about it? I'll talk about it. So uh, we will not send it to consent, and I will take it out. We are now going to consider um, House Bill 109. And I have talked to a number of people trying to 
figure out a way to handle some of the concerns that we heard. I do think it is somewhat problematic. I want to make sure that people who are at um, firing ranges, whether they be uh, commercial firing ranges or people's backyards, um, and that people who are hunting uh, with, that there is, I want to be crystal clear that people who are learning, maybe in a training class, can um, exchange um, firearms on you know, a temporary basis to learn as, as they're in a, a safety class or as they're learning to hunt or whatever the situation is. Um, so I intend to bring a floor amendment to make that clear because I think 109, um, there, there may be room to improve it. Um, I, I, I want to be, I just want to mention that here that I will, my, it is my intention to bring a floor amendment. I am sorry that I did not have something, I wasn't able to work something out to have to bring right now. Thank you. I would, I would have to agree that, it, I mean, this is about commercial sales. Mm -hmm. And it's not about displaying a gun or being at a, at a um, gun range? Gun range, yes. <laughs> I have to go. But, um, and just holding a gun or teaching someone, it's really about commercial sales. So I would be open to your amendment, but I think that this is an important bill and that we should pass this bill. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, <coughs> are we ready to vote? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. And um, the, so the vote is 3 2, and I would like, I'll take that one out. We are moving on to House Bill 514, which is, thank you. We have an amendment, 1943. Fundamentally changes the, the days. I'd like to make this amendment. I'll second. 1943. Senator Obake moves uh, amendment 1943. Senator Chanley seconds. Um, and to speak to the, yeah. the, um, one of the big things that the amendment does is it moves a seven day to three day. This is a bill that is, was really introduced as a way to prevent or uh, to prevent suicide and giving people time to think about their actions um, may curtail that. So um, we thought the seven days might be too long, although I think there's some other considerations that you can talk to that. But uh, so this would move it from seven to three days. Correct. I, uh, I will just say that um, I am going to be voting today in favor of this amendment to move it to three days, but I want to make it clear that I will be bringing an amendment to the floor because I'm not comfortable with just making it three days. I would like to make it three days or until a NICS um, check has come back with the results have come back from the background. So that is uh, important to me, and if that means, uh, I, I don't know the, the exactly how I'm going to be doing that, but I, I do want to express that I, don't, I think there needs to be a safety net. Um, it, from my own personal work with people who are suicidal, I am, I am not 100% convinced that three days is adequate, but I, I will vote in favor of it, understanding that I will be submitting a, um, an amendment as a safety net. Anything else to say? Well, I have to question if this bill is just for the prevention of suicides. No, it's not only. Okay. Okay, because if it were, 
whether it's seven days, three days, or ten minutes, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Well, the, I understand that, and just um, the the uh, literature says that it actually it, it, suicides are impulsive acts in general, and we have many suicides with guns. They are the most effective way to actually end your life. Yeah. And that, in fact, with an impulsive act, if you interrupt an impulsive act, it, things can change in that period of time. And uh, you can actually save lives by, by having a waiting period that or interrupts that act. I'm not sure three days. I mean, I don't think there is evidence of how many days you actually have to have. But I think it needs to be, personally, it needs to be at least three. Any further discussion? Are we ready to vote on the amendment 1943? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Two. Is there another motion? I move to pass with amendment. I pass 514 with an amendment. Is there a second? Yes. Seconded by Senator Chamley. Uh, is there a further discussion? Again, another important bill. I think that um, we need to do what we can to curtail um, gun violence and to promote gun safety. And I think these are, this is a bill that does not really harm anyone, um, but we're trying to, to help promote safety. From my own perspective, I, I agree with you, and I also think that um, we are balancing lives with what I consider to be an inconvenience. I'm sorry that some people are going to feel inconvenienced by having to wait to get their guns. But that inconvenience is balanced with lives. And that to me is no contest. So I am very much in favor of a waiting period. And I would like to just add a little bit extra in order to bring in the fact that a background check is 95% is of the time it's done in about ten, five minutes or less. But there are times when it's not. And those are times we need to keep into consideration as well. Any other discussion? All those in favor of 514 as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Three to two. That would be great. Thank you. So, uh, and Senator LeBake will be taking that. And, um, yes. we are going to take a short recess. Two minutes, which we all know means a little more than two minutes. Okay. We are out of recess, and we would, I would like to bring up um, for executive, to exec, however we say that as a verb, is um, 564, relative to possession of firearms on school property. Thank you. We have an amendment. Um, which is number 1939, which adds, any person picking up or dropping off a student provided the firearm remains in a locked motor vehicle as an exclusion.
Um, I recall hearing testimony about um, a parent dropping their child off to school or protecting the child during the day and what, what um, the person meant is they bring their child to school. So I think that we need to make some exceptions for that case. However, um, I've talked with all of my superintendents of schools about this bill. And they feel that it's very important. And I think that it's the superintendents, the teachers, the students that we really need to listen to about this because they're the ones that are at school. They're the ones that are living with this every day. Um, it is not normal to have um, guns on school, to have, in school, to have school shootings. That is not normal. And when we continue to do nothing about this, it does, it will continue. So I think we need to, you know, make a statement, take a stand, and say that it is, it is not acceptable. And, so, and the amendment is acceptable to me. I, I do agree with the, um, the amendment. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of amendment 1939 say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. So it is three to two, and I, I will, uh, I would like to hear another motion. Oh, I will make it. I will move <laughs> up to pass as amended on House Bill 564. Second. Seconded by Senator Levick. Discussion. Again, I will say. Okay. <laughs> on the bill, that I think that we have to, we have to stand up. We have to um, show our, our, told them that we do care about them, and we have to listen to the people that are, that are superintendents of the schools, that are attending the schools, and um, support this bill. Thank you. So, go ahead. I'll save most of it for the floor, but I think it's a bad bill. I think this bill is going to make our schools less safe and I understand that there's a big group here in doing this because they think it's going to be making it more safe it won't. The New Hampshire School Board Association opposes this bill and they oppose it for a reason. They too see it as making the schools less safe. If you notice in Colorado there was another school shooting. They have this legislation in place it didn't stop the shooting neither will this it's a different problem so i will be opposing this bill Thank you. any other discussion um, i just wanted to add though that there are some people that are authorized to possess firearms in the school so it's not like there there aren't people that have firearms. There are certain people that that are authorized to have firearms. I find that acceptable. I'd, I'd also yeah. I'd also like to remind us all that it is it is a federal law that schools are gun free zones and that we are not allowed currently to enforce the federal law to protect our children. So this is this is. Um, I personally have not seen any literature to say that it is that there are more people are clustering around schools that don't have guns in order to, to go in with their guns. I believe that it does not affect um, how many people are going to go find a school that says no guns allowed, which we heard a lot of. That, that I think is a fallacy. Um, and again, I'd like to say that at what Senator Levesque said, which is, if you talk to the students who are in schools, those who are spending their days worried about gun violence, if you talk to those people who are going through drills, and I'll, now I feel like I'm on the floor, but if you talk to those people who are going through drills, and I've heard about, I've heard from my own grandchildren, which by the way is devastating to hear, that she was in the bathroom during a drill and she had to, she was not let back into a room because, I mean, the rest of the day is ruined. The rest of the day, the rest of the week, children don't want to go back to school. They are right, 
rightfully believing that they are not safe in school. It is our obligation to do everything we can to keep our children safe in school. And there's nothing more important to me. So I certainly am in favor. And um, I always value your opinion, sir, but you and I disagree. So if there's no further comments or questions of each other, I will um, like to have a vote. All those in favor of, uh, we are, in a, the number is 564, House Bill 564, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. And that was as amended. That's all, and now we're gonna, that's ought, ought, ought to pass with an amendment. Anyone take that? Um, and we are now on the last FN, which is um, 696, establishing a protective order for vulnerable adults. We do. Thank you. And we're introducing amendment, our Senator Chanley is amendment 1954. Yep. And I will move that amendment. Second. Moved by Senator Chanley, seconded by Senator Hennessy. So if, if I can speak um, the amendment, I think that uh, HB 696 is a very important bill to protect the vulnerable elderly, vulnerable adults, often elderly, but not always vulnerable adults. And I think um, we heard lots of very good testimony about why the bill is important. We also, I think, um, some folks have um, mis, I, I don't know if it's a misunderstanding, or you know, some people were very concerned that it was, um, uh, going to um, unduly disarm people. But I, I, I can't say, I, I can't disagree with that. Um, for, so the amendment tries to make clear a couple of issues. Um, first, um, let me be clear that in order for someone's firearms to be taken from him or her, the court needs to make a specific finding that the uh, vulnerable adult is indeed indeed um, there is a risk a, a real risk posed to the vulnerable adult it is but other than that in other ways it does you know it's similar to other practices we have in law um, if the what the three significant changes that the amendment makes is that um, a hearing can be requested by the person um, who has been ordered to surrender firearms, and that hearing should be made should be held uh, no less than two business days and no more than three business days after the request is received by the clerk. That changes it from the original, which I believe said five business days. It goes now to two business days. Um, the other uh, items that change is that. If, the, it says the language in the um, bill originally said, in which the plaintiff, if we're looking at uh, line 19 on the amendment, in which the plaintiff has, uh, may have a legal or equitable interest. Since this has to do with exploitation, harassment, and abuse of uh, people who may not be related, it's really clear the plaintiff must have a legal or equitable interest, not may have, must have. So we say the plaintiff has. And that, that's the change on line 20 and again on line 32. Um, the other issue is uh, lines 24 through 27 says that um, the prohibition uh, from the defendant transferring or otherwise encumbering assets should be proportional to the amount believed to have been taken. And um, finally, uh, on the second page, lines three to five, 
this, the uh, qualification put, is put in that says, um, provided such person reasonably appears to be of sound mind when making such a statement. And that is to prevent someone who is, is uh, if we know people are uh, suffering from confusion and dementia, you know, we would not use a statement that is coming from someone who does not appear to be of sound mind. So that's what the amendment does, and I ask for your support. Thank you. Is there, uh, we already moved in second, but yes. Is there uh, any further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment 1954 say aye. 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 Opposed? No. And I'll move what to pass as amended. And Senator Chandler moves ought to pass as amended on um, Senate, uh, House Bill 696. Second. <coughs> Seconded by Senator LeBake. Um, and further discussion, Senator Carson. I'd like to thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, when this bill was originally sent to me back, I think it was in December, um, I looked it over, and since that time, um, the bill itself has morphed into something that as a co-sponsor, I cannot sponsor. Um, I don't think this bill is really going to do anything to really help the elderly. In fact, I received an email yesterday from a constituent who is going through a, a problem, and he, he's gone to the courts, and the police can't help him. They keep telling him, you, you've got to go through the court. Well, the court is issuing orders, but the police are not able to enforce them. Um, I, I just, I can't support this. And, and it's, to, in my opinion, it's very sad because I've always been a strong advocate for the elderly and protecting the elderly. But this bill and what it's morphed into, I just, there's just no way that I can support it. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of ought to pass as amended on 696, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. And Senator Chanley, would you like to? I'll take it up. Sure. <laughs> Is your name Senator Chanley, young man? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 